Today I'm going to share with you five mistakes that astrophotographers make when they're just starting out in the hobby and how to avoid them. Hey everybody, my name is Nick and welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. If you're a beginner just starting out in astrophotography or if you just have a real passion for the hobby, then please do consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so that you're notified every time I do an upload. And also please remember to give the video a thumbs up. So there are quite a lot of mistakes that astrophotographers can make when they're just starting out in the hobby. I've managed to whittle my list down to about five. Um, but if you have something different to the list that I've created here, then leave a comment down below. So the first mistake that I see a lot of astrophotographers making is buying all of the gear and having no idea how to use it. Now that may seem a little bit harsh, but bear with me. Now there are some people that are lucky enough to have a big budget when they're just starting out in astrophotography and they decide to buy all the latest and greatest equipment, including, but not exclusive to, dedicated astrophotography cameras, um, auto guiding equipment, uh, go-to equatorial mounts, etc, etc. And the problem with that is that if you've never actually taken any sort of astrophotography pictures before or used a telescope at all, then you are just setting yourself up to fail. The best way to avoid that is to to start simple and add the complexity over time. That's not to say that you can't buy all of the equipment straight away if you've got all the budget, that's great, you can buy all the equipment. But just start out more simple. So if you've if you've bought a dedicated astronomy camera and you've got an equatorial mount and auto guiding equipment, then first of all, just start by using the equatorial mount and getting a good polar alignment down. If you have a DSLR, use that and attach that to your camera instead of trying to go through a, another learning process at the same time in learning um, how to use a dedicated astrophotography camera or just put auto guiding to one side for the first few sessions. If you start with a more simple setup at the beginning then you'll get more successful nights right from the off and then you'll start to grow in the hobby and you'll find it really enjoyable etc etc. If you try and put all of the pieces of the puzzle together at the same time then you're just setting yourself up to fail. You'll probably end up getting incredibly frustrated and I actually see some people on forums getting rid of their gear completely because they just get so fed up with not being able to use it properly. And that's a real shame because astrophotography is an incredibly rewarding hobby if you just put in a little effort at the beginning. Of course, if you don't actually have the budget to buy all of that equipment in the first place, then actually you can avoid um, this problem altogether by just starting out with a simple star tracker and DSLR and that's probably the simplest um, tracking setup that you can get anyway. But if you think of your setup like a jigsaw you don't just take all the pieces out of the box, chuck them on the table and then sort of mash them down with your hands and then end up with a completed puzzle at the end. That's just not how it works. You take one piece at a time and you find out where that goes and you put it in place. And astrophotography is no different. You are putting all the pieces of the puzzle together in terms of how to get the best image at the end but if you start with something smaller, then you'll get better results straight away. The second mistake that some astrophotographers make is that they can have their expectations too high. And by that, and this really feeds into mistake number one that we've already been talking about, is that people expect to get the best results possible by buying all of the best gear and that just isn't how astrophotography works. If you're just starting out in this hobby, even if you've got the latest and greatest equipment, if you're just starting out and expecting to get a pods straight away, then you may just want to dial back those expectations a little. It's really easy to get sucked into all of the amazing astrophotography that's shared on the likes of Instagram and Twitter, etc., and expect all of those results to come from the equipment when actually it comes from years of experience of using the gear that they have and adding newer gear over time to get those better results. You will need to understand the fundamentals first before you can start producing those amazing images that we all admire on social media. It's not to say that you can't get there, you absolutely can, it will just take you a little bit of time. The next mistake that I think probably all beginners to astrophotography are guilty of, including myself, is rushing your setup. Now it is really tempting if you've got you know one hour of clear skies and you've not had clear skies for a couple of weeks, you look outside and go, it's a clear night, I haven't got my gear set up, let's put the rig together, let's get it outside, polar align, etc, etc, and get imaging as quickly as possible. The problem with doing that is that I can guarantee, especially when you're new to this hobby, that if you rush your setup, something will go wrong. And if something goes wrong, especially if you've only got a couple of hours of clear skies, you'll end up spending the whole time trying to fix a problem that was caused by rushing your setup and getting no images at all, and then that leaves you again feeling frustrated. The best way to avoid that is, as tempting as it may be, is to just take your time with your setup. Really understand what you're doing. Spend an extra 15, 20 minutes 
doing your setup, making sure you've got your balance right on your mount, making sure you've got your polar alignment as accurate as it can possibly be, make sure that you've got all of your connections in the right place, make sure that your batteries are charged, <laughs> make sure that um, you've got the right settings on your camera, etc. There are so many things to think about that if you go out and, and rush your setup, something will probably go wrong. While that extra 15 to 20 minutes might feel like a bit of a waste of time as it's eating into your imaging time while you're setting up, especially if you've only got an hour of clear skies, half an hour's worth of astrophotography images is better than no images. That's the way to look at it. And you'll feel much better having achieved 30 minutes of really good quality images than you will of after an hour of frustration and nothing. And if you don't believe me, then just ask any astrophotographer that's ever spent any time underneath the, a clear sky, because I can guarantee every single one of us has come into a problem at some point. Mistake number four, and I entirely blame social media for this, is comparing yourself to people that have been doing it for years or people that are doing it with much better quality equipment than you have. There are people out there that have been doing astrophotography for decades and if you're comparing yourself to the people that have got you know tens of thousands of followers on on Instagram straight away then you're gonna start feeling a little bit disillusioned and as though you're doing something wrong whereas actually you're probably doing everything right but you're just going through that learning process and over time you'll get better. The great thing about the astrophotography community I've found is that every Everybody is so supportive and if you're sharing your first ever astrophotography image and you think oh no one's gonna like this because it doesn't look anything like the things that I see on Instagram then you are sadly mistaken because we've all taken that same picture as well um, here's the first ever picture um, that I took using a, a tracking mount of the Andromeda Galaxy and let's be honest that image <laughs> is a pile of garbage but that was the first ever astrophotography image that I took with a tracking mount and I was so proud of that image because if you look at the astrophotography that I'm putting out now on social media it is leaps and bounds ahead of where I was, you know, 12, 18 months ago. And that's something to be proud of. And you will find you will have continual progress throughout this hobby. Mistake number five, and this is a really important one, is not planning your imaging session in advance. Now, I'm not saying you have to plan your session weeks in advance. I just mean spending 10 minutes before you take your gear outside to look at what it is that you're gonna be imaging that night. What you'll find is that if you don't plan your session just a little bit, and the planning really will come down to, you know, potentially even just 30 seconds, especially if you've been doing this for a couple of years and you know what's in the sky at the time that you can image with your equipment. But if you're new to this, then you'll need to spend time on Stellarium to see how will a deep sky object look in the field Field of view of the equipment that I have. Do I have the right gear to image the target that I want to image? You know, do I have the right focal length or will the target just simply be too small in the field of view? Where in the garden do I need to be in order to be able to image that target? Is there going to be a bright light shining in that particular part of the garden that I may want to, you know, shield slightly? Is a neighbor's roof going to be in the way and therefore I should set up in a different part of the garden to avoid that? Well, I need to do a meridian flip during the night to keep on my target. All of these things are things to think about before the session, not after you've gotten outside and set up, because again, this is there's nothing more frustrating than going through the setup routine and getting everything right and then standing there thinking, oh, what shall I image tonight? Or realizing that the thing that you want to image is actually on the other side of your house and there, and you've set your mount up right next to your house, whereas you should have set up at the top of the garden so that you'd be able to clear your roof or something like that. And this is especially important when you've got limited clear skies because we've all been there. We've all set up our equipment outside and started our imaging session and five minutes later, the clouds roll in that will happen to you at some point. So just spending a few minutes beforehand planning your session really can save you time later. And the last thing that I want to share with you is not a mistake, but a tip. And that is to simply have fun and enjoy it. This is a remarkable hobby and you will be absolutely amazed at what you can achieve in a fairly short period of time. As long as you're willing to undergo that learning curve, the results that you will achieve are incredible. And if you're not having fun, then you're doing something wrong. We all do this as a hobby. We all do it because we enjoy it, not because we have to do it. And so if you're dreading your imaging session or if you walk away from your imaging session feeling really frustrated, then you're doing something wrong. And at that point, it's time to take a step back and just have a think about what is it that went wrong? 
how can I avoid it next time? And it might be that you need to reach out to people. As I've said, the astrophotography community is incredibly supportive. You can get in touch with me via my website or via social media. I'm always happy to help those that need it. You can use forums like Stargazers Lounge. Um, that's got a wealth of experience um, on there. I've used that quite a lot myself. Um, and there's also tons of Facebook groups as well. Use the community around you. Nobody is going to laugh at you. Chances are, if you're having a problem, then someone before you has already had that same problem problem and will know how to help you. And there is nothing in this hobby that can't be overcome. It might be something that you're doing, it might be that you've just got a faulty piece of equipment, but reach out to people, get talking, and once you've got through that frustration, trust me, it is worth it. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring and I'll see you guys next time.